And let's be real about this. It's insane that we haven't raised the retirement age in the United States. It's totally crazy. Joe Biden, if that were the case, Joe Biden should not be running for president. Hey, Joe Biden is 81 years old. The retirement age in the United States at which you start to receive Social Security and you are eligible for Medicare is 65. Joe Biden has technically been eligible for Social Security and Medicare for 16 years, and he wants to continue in office until he is 86, which is 19 years past when he would be eligible for retirement. No one in the United States should be retiring at 65 years old. Frankly, I think retirement itself is a stupid idea unless you have some sort of health problem. Everybody that I know who is, who is elderly, who has retired, is dead within five years. And if you talk to people who are elderly and they lose their purpose in life by losing their job and they stop working, things go to hell in a handbasket real quick. But put all of that aside, just on a fiscal level and on a logical level. When Franklin Delano Roosevelt established 65 as the retirement age, the average life expectancy in the United States was 63 years old. Today, the average life expectancy in the United States is close to 80. It's totally insane that you believe that you should be able to work from the time that you are essentially 20 to the time that you are 65, which is a 45 year period, pay in, and then you will receive social security benefits sufficient to support you and your family, you and your wife or whatever, for like another 20 years. That's crazy talk. That is not fiscally sustainable. The notion that if you have to raise the retirement age to 67 or 68, that everyone is gonna fall apart. My parents are that age. My parents are not retired and they shouldn't retire. It would be very bad for them to retire. By the way, it's disrespectful to people who are 67, 68, 69 years old to suggest that they are in the same shape as people who are 65 were in 1940. Oh boy, what's going on everyone? Stop Kenny here today and Ben Shapiro just sparked outrage on X with his take about social security and everyone in their mom is crying about it. And I'm starting to think that uh, like a lot of people, the Democrats will always complain, like not Democrats, but Democrats will always point out like when I say Ronald Reagan and how, oh, conservatives always speak about uh physical physical responsibility and balancing the budget but they spend just as much money as the democrats dun 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 but the problem is is that a lot of that spending is due to social security which is our biggest expense on the government budget so when conservatives say okay let's be physical so responsible and cut some costs of social security everybody across the aisle goes no don't do that but then when conservatives compromise and allow it to be on the budget oh look at conservatives they're such hypocrites <laughs> they say they're going to balance the budget and they don't color me surprised now you know lauren chan could you imagine if republicans actually tried to appeal for voters for once and here's the thing a lot of the voters i'm just being honest here majority of voters are low information voters they don't understand that we're on a path that is not sustainable, right? They don't understand. They, they just think money come out of the skies, for some of you guys anyway. And I kind of want to give a deep dive into some of the stuff. But before I go into that, you want you probably want to hear what would conservatives replace Social Security with? I would, I'm would i a big advocate of privatizing Social Security. And now some people may not like the idea, oh, you're going to give your money to BlackRock, Kenny? No, but I mean, your government pension is like, a lot of these government pension plans and retirement accounts are are being managed by Wall Street. You do know that, right? You, you, you guys know that, right? Look at your Secretary of Treasury. Uh, Florida's Secretary of Treasury just took government pensions, Florida's retirement programs, out of BlackRock, State Street, and all these woke companies. And they're putting it somewhere else because of the old e ESG initiatives. So w why not just make individual citizens have control over their private uh accounts right and before i go into it i'm going into some some stuff here's matt walsh it's time for my children's generation to pay for me to retire is such an insane selfish and backwards thing to think yes because as conservatives and this is a problem this is this is core to our ideology our, our, our ideological worldview is that we believe we have a duty and responsibility to the future of our generation so as a conservative I will never expect something for my kids to do. The only thing I expect my kids to do is honor me, respect me, and in, in some ways help me out. If I if I ever fall into, uh, I'm not able to live by myself anymore. But this, this is this is because liberals have successfully conditioned us to think that we have to live on our own. When in times past, grandparents used to live with the parent with the kids, kids, grandkids, all of them used to be in one house. 
and effectively the kids were the caretakers of the elderly and in the benefits of that our kids get exposed to our to the grandparents they get wisdom and experience i think this is why we have a lot of immature kids nowadays because they don't live with their grandparents most of the time the best you can do is have your grandparents live like a block down but that's not really economically viable for most people and i think that's one part of the culture that we've lost and why a lot of the youth don't have respect for the elderly anymore because they're not used to living with the elderly we send our, our parents to retirement homes. And then when we want to cut Social Security, it's, it's understandable they get outraged because like, yo, my kids don't want to take care of me. And this is it, it, it breathes into like some of the cultural decay in our culture. But that's a topic for another issue. I want to focus on Social Security. Right. So much less type and post in public. Your kids, ch your children's generation does not owe you their money. They need to keep their money so that they can build a life for themselves. This is what we're supposed to want for our kids. I agree with this. Sorry, I agree with this. Right. I pay for my parents generation to retire, which I'm currently doing right now. I just mentioned uh, the, at the time of this video, March 8th, 2024 was my mom's 65th. No, sorry. Yeah, 60, I forget the age. I think her 66th, 65th birthday. And she decided to go on. She retired. My mom retired. And right now, my Social Security taxes are being paid to pay for her benefits. Now, how much been? Now, the problem here is people are trying to quit. Oh, look, all you do is speak in a microphone all day. And the market decided that. It's not my fault you're not working a job that pays you more. My mom, my mom was a nursing assistant when she retired my mom was manual labor oh, backbreaking work right but even i can see hey this is not sustainable and i'll show you some reasons why now people complain about the debt as i mentioned earlier about oh my god republicans they, they spend just as much as the democrats or just as bad as the democrats and this is a trojan horse for a lot of uh, politicians to justify government spending we are bankrupting younger generation right right and you wonder why the millennials are so angry it's a Ponzi scheme. It, I agree. As a millennial, I do not. I'm not counting on Social Security to retire, right? If, if you guys want me to show you, I have I have a I have investment accounts. I have three investment accounts. I have an individual, uh, oh, 401k that's not associated with a company. I have a Roth IRA, which is a pre uh, uh, after tax post tax uh, retirement account where at 59 I can pull money out. I treat it like a savings account, but I could pull money out tax free because I already paid the taxes up front. Which is what is one of my uh, my alternatives for Social Security because we need to reform Social Security because Social Security is the biggest expenditure that we have on our government budget. If you look here, the U.S. owes two point nine trillion dollars for Social Security. You heard that right. Two. So every year, two point nine trillion dollars goes towards Social Security. So you're telling me that you need the government to take out 6% of your earnings to retire for you? Like, like that's what I do for my 401k plan. Like, my company gives me a 6% match. The government the government is literally taking 6% of your income just to give people, what, $3,000 a month in benefits? 2014, 2024, because right, my mom retired just now. My mom decided to retire at 62 yeah, my mom turned 62. I it's funny, you know, women don't talk like my mom's a boomer. She don't like to talk about her age, so that's probably why I don't remember. So this is how much my mom's supposed to get a month from retirement. And if you invest your money wisely, like six percent of your money, you invest it wisely. Let's say you you invested in Amazon in a privatized social security account, which will be tax free because you don't have to pay taxes on it, like a 401k. You'll be a billionaire right now, and you will live. You'll be living way more than three thousand thirty eight hundred, right? And another benefit for privatizing uh, Social Security is that you're able to pass it down to future generations. That's my biggest problem with Social Security. You're making me pay into something that I may not be be live enough live long enough to take advantage of. And the and the funny part is, this is not sustainable. Two point nine trillion dollars. At the end of the day, all you're really doing is telling all you're really doing is telling the government to save six percent of your of your income for you. Oh no, sorry, we're not using it for you. We're using it to retire other people. It is a Ponzi scheme. How is this fair? Because by the time I'm in retirement age, this is not 
This will not be here. This will not be here. We're on a path to nowhere with Social Security. And I, and I like the entitlement a lot of people have is that, oh, I paid into Social Security. No, you didn't. You just paid for someone else's Social Security. And 70% of this money right here is paid by the, 20, the top 20% of taxpayers in the U.S. The bottom 50% of taxpayers only contribute 10% of that amount into this total. Still a lot of money, but there's a lot of people in this country that don't pay zero taxes and they feel entitled to Social Security. Should they be allowed to get Social Security? Because they pay nothing. There's people in this country that never pay taxes and they're getting Social Security right now. This is why I'm for privatized Social Security, for privatized accounts. Right? Democrats and Repo Democrats want to kind of lobby this. Oh, uh, Republicans want to cut your Medicare. They want to cut your Social Security. But they're the ones who brought up these ideas in the first place because they know this is not responsible. They know this is not sustainable. Yet they want to sit here and pretend and push this idea, this uh, this concept. Oh, Republicans want to cut it. Well, you need to cut it too, Democrats. It's not a Republican or Democrat problem. It's an American problem. And this is the problem I have with the current politics of today. Because politics today is not about solving solutions, fixing problems. I'm all for reforming Social Security. I'm not in favor of removing Social Security. But it, ne it needs to be reformed. It needs to. And both sides agree on this. But they don't tell you this. Uh, in politics, what gets rewarded is the desirability of a policy, uh, of a policy not a feasibility. Ben Shapiro may have needed to word it differently, but I believe conservatives need to be talk about the the seriousness of this idea, this 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 problem that we're facing with the physical budget. We complain about, oh my God, we're thirty four trillion dollars in debt, but we're doing it two point two two point nine trillion dollars just taking care of Social Security and Medicare, and then you want to spend billions of dollars, trillions of dollars to foreign aid? Make it make sense, but we can do both. We could take care of stuff at home and do that. And but with this with this 2.9 trillion dollars, you think you can do both? Nikki Haley? Warhawk Democrats? This is what happens when you, you, you have a population of people who are not paying attention. The politicians become wolves and they're looking, they're they're eating us alive right now. So look at this clip that Larry Elder bring up, and he's one of the people that really convinced me of the idea of privatized uh social security. And I dive in more of my thoughts about it after this clip. Let's take a look. It is certainly true that President George W. Bush proposed allowing workers to devote a portion of their Social Security contribution to a private account to invest in the stock market in pursuit of a higher rate of return. Now, the report from the Bush Commission on Social Security read, Social Security will be strengthened if modernized to include a system of voluntary personal accounts. Personal accounts improve retirement security by facilitating wealth creation and providing participants with assets that they own and that can be inherited rather than providing only claims to benefits that remain subject to political negotiation, end of quote. But get this, it is also true that Bush abandoned the plan after Democrats denounced it as a risky scheme to privatize Social Security. It is also equally true, however, that both Democrat presidents Barack Obama and Bill Clinton called Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security without reform unsustainable, their word not mine. In March 2013, Politico wrote, Obama also warned that Democrats need to embrace at least some changes to unsustainable entitlement programs in order to achieve their long-term priorities in the quote. Obama set up a bipartisan deficit commission that made several recommendations. When it issued its final report, ABC News wrote, the president has tasked commission co-chairman Erskine Bowles and Alan Simpton with devising a plan to reduce the deficits and redirect the country from its, wait for it, unsustainable fiscal path. The end result is a wide ranging and controversial report that its supporters touted as a good start to a tough problem. To dig the country out of debt, it wrote, the plan put forth by the panel today calls for drastic changes such as raising the Social Security retirement age, making cuts to Medicare, and doubling the federal gas tax, end of quote. As for President Clinton, he too set up a bipartisan commission to tackle the entitlements problem. The federal government Social Security website wrote the following. On November 5, 1993, President Bill Clinton 
by Executive Order 12878, created the Bipartisan Commission on Entitlement Reform. The commission, which began its work in February 1994, goal was to devise a package of proposals which would reduce the overall cost of these programs. The two co-chairs of the commission developed their own Social Security proposal, which featured raising the retirement age to 70, a cut in the Social Security payroll tax, with the money redirected into mandatory private accounts and adopting price indexing, among other changes. This was perhaps the first advocacy of carve out private accounts and of price indexing by a prominent Main Street group, end of quote. You seen that? You heard that. Bill Clinton solved the problem. Obama saw the problem. He said, yo, Medicare is kind of expensive because in Medicare, it's only between two institutions, the Medicare providers and the Medicare insurance people and the medical insurance people. So make it make sense. Why do I need the government to negotiate my rates on my behalf? They don't know what they don't know what's specific to me. They don't know that I'm super healthy and I rarely go to the hospital. So my health care will be cheaper than someone who goes to the hospital every other day and have a lot of uh, negative health conditions that don't take care of themselves as much as I do. So their health care should be more expensive. This is what I'm talking about. It's not a fair system. Oh, uh, I paid for my parents. Now my parent, now my kids need to pay for me. No, you're supposed to take care of yourself. It seems like conser there's some conservatives that they're all for personal responsibility until it has to apply to them. Oh, no, no, no. Yo, your kids can take care of you. <laughs> you don't need the govern you don't need to tax your kids so you can live off them and be like, oh, I'm gonna live by myself. I'm independent. Uh -huh. I'm gonna live in the villages in Florida. No. Self man, like I live with I I practice what I preach. I'm not sitting here, I'm not gonna rely on the government to uh fund my retirement. In my view, if if I want to cut reform a little bit, I'll say, hey, shoot. Uh, in my view. This is why I want to privatize Social Security. Because if you privatize Social Security, it's a private account, right? They take 6% of your income and, you know, Social Security, we have a Social Security number for a reason. Hey, hey, here's your privatized Social your federal, uh, federal security uh, retirement account. Where do you want, here's the stocks that we have available. Here's the assets you can buy with the funds. What you want to do with the, what, what, what you want to do with the money allocated for you. Okay, since I paid 60% of my income, I put my tax contributions go directly to that individual re retirement account. Now you're going to have BlackRock and all these people trying to fight to get those $2.9 trillion. But at least you have a greater retirement. You have you you have the chance to put yourself at a better retirement circumstance than if you let the government take care of it. All right? If that's what I would do if I was if I was if I was king of America and I was able to reform social security, I would reform that's how I would reform it. I'll put it at 59 years old because that's the, the time for our individual Roth uh, IRA, which is a, a, a post-tax retirement account. I have that right now. Six 6000 a, a year is what you're allowed to contribute to that account. And at 59 years old, I can start taking contributions out of it. I can start selling assets in my account and, and paying myself how, however much I want. This month, I may want $6,000 out of my retirement account. But why are you giving control of the government over your own retirement, right? We, we see the problem with nationalized health care, but for some reason, nationalized retirement, we're okay with. I don't understand this idea in American politics. FDR really messed us up with this uh, Social Security thing. And he picked that arbitrary number, 65. And here's another negative to Social Security. What if you die? What if you die? You talking about, oh, my kids should pay for me. What if you die before then? then you couldn't you, nothing happens because there's no there's no money waiting for you you're not paying into a system you're paying for someone else that's that's it it's a redistribution of wealth you're paying for someone else at least with in my example you have money so when you die because you contribute to an individual account hey who is his beneficiary okay first it goes to his wife okay his kids you can control that you can own that but if you if right now in 2024, if you die right now, there's no money that's going to be passed down to your kids. You paid into a system, right? Because if you really paid into a system, there's there should be a money associated with your name. And when you die, it's supposed to be passed down to your kids. That's proof in of itself 
that there's no there you don't pay into social security you pay for you're essentially a tax slave you work for the benefit and retirement of other people that's the truth that's the reality of social security and i don't understand why these people want to get mad oh at least to appeal to a voters that's how i would appeal as a conservative this is how this is what i'll push as the alternative to social security you pay into an account individually for you your taxes that means you're not going to get any more or any less than what you contribute because it's tied to your social security number when you file taxes you use your social security number so the government will be able to track it and see oh this person needs this amount he paid he had ten thousand dollars in tax he had his net income for the year was ten thousand dollars six percent of of ten thousand is like 60 bucks i think 60 bucks yes 60 bucks Yeah, 60 bucks. I have to make sure. Maybe I got my math wrong, guys. You let me know. And he'll have $600 in his retirement account. But the way the current system is set up in this progressive tax system that we have, the rich pays more into this. They contribute more into Social Security for the benefit of the bottom 50% of Americans that don't pay anything in taxes. Is that Does that sound fair to you? But you pay into a system. Yeah, right? This is a Ponzi scheme, honestly. Social Security needs reform. I think we all can agree on that. Social Security needs reform. But if we continue on this path, it's not sustainable. We'll bankrupt the country. We'll destroy the country financially. And for what? For a bunch of people to keep their retirement age at 65 because they're almost there. They're 64 years old today. And they're on one more year. I just need to hold out for one more year. And then when they hear the Republicans say, we want to raise the tax, the retirement age is 70 years old. You're like, no. This is, this is the problem with entitlement programs. Because end of the day, there's a conflict of interest between the individual citizens themselves. Because they know they don't pay into the tax system the same way as everyone else. And essentially, it's um, it, they take advantage. And until we change these incentives, we're always going to get the politicians that we get. Because you get politicians that tell you what you want to hear. When, as I showed you in the clip before, they know damn well they need to do something about this tax system or else it will destroy the country. They have to either raise the, rate, the age of retirement cut social security or reform it and restructure it in some other way those are your three options america i'm for restructuring it we can keep it at 65 hell i'll, I'll even lower it to 59 years old but it has to be completely privatized that's the reform option if you want to keep social security the same way it is right now you have to raise the age you have to too many people are living right now that, that's that's the that's the that's the that's the that's the downside because just like car insurance you, you car insurance rely on the fact that majority of their people, majority of the drivers will not take, will not claim any, their insurance, will not damage their car. This is the same thing with social security. They're betting on a lot of people, more people dying than actually utilizing it. But the life expectancy is higher today than it's ever been. So it's, it's overburdening the system. So Ben's right. I'm sorry, Ben's right. Ben's talking about the feasibility of Social Security while everyone's sitting here and hitting Ben about the desirability of Social Security. And like my father says, nothing ever gets done with your feelings. But I'm sure this is going to be a hot button one. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have a lot of takes, a lot of different takes. I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. What you guys think about Social Security. Do you like the privatization option or you like the national current option that we have today that's leading us down a path of financial doom? Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you're thinking. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I really do appreciate you guys watching to the end of the video. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.